Hello and welcome back to another video from me, Evan. And today we're going to be taking a look at all of my DVD collections. All of my DVDs that I have that are Doctor Who related. Uh, none that aren't Doctor Who related, but I can do another video, a separate video on that. If you would not like me to. So, let's start off. I'm going to pull them each out and then see which one. Uh, and then talk about them for a bit. So, first ever classic story ever. An unearthly child. Um, first part, great. All the others a bit unusual. Um, the Aztecs, I really need to get around to watching this. I've had it for a couple of years now. I need to get around to watching it a little bit. Uh, Gunfighters, an okay story, a bit underrated. Tenth Planet, it's the first Doctor Song song, and I kind of say it's a good story, good introduction of the Cybermen. And uh, interesting about the first regeneration. Power of the Daleks. This is uh, Pat Brown's first ever story. I think it's good. You get to know uh, his ca his character quite well. And yeah, I think it's good. Quite a recent addition to the collection, in 2016. Um, the Macro Terror, which came out not last year, the year before. So, Mac Terror, good DVD, I think. It looks good, everything. It's a good story. It's nice how they uh, mimic the source material, and it was very... It was accurate to the story. They did cut a few scenes out, but it doesn't really matter. Next on to the faceless ones. Uh, I need to... I did watch this today. Just uh, re-watched it. It's a good, good story. I like it. And, yeah... The departure of Ben and Polly, so good. I need to get more series, uh, four stuff for Doctor Who in the classic series. Moving on, we have the Ice Warriors. Now, this is a really good story. More people say it's a bit underrated, one actually. It's quite good and it's good, interesting story, to say the least. Enemy of the World, possibly my favourite Second Doctor story ever. It's, it's really great about Salamander and finding out why the, the Doctor and all of that. It's, it's a good story. I really enjoy it. It's a very good story and one that's very good. And it was actually discovered quite recently, 2013, uh, for the 50th. Uh, the Web of Fear. Now this is a good story, I do enjoy it about all the Yeti and things. It's a bit of a shame about part 3, in fact that was just a telesnap reconstruction. Because there was the official one, but I think that got lost, so... It's a bit of a shame about that, because it was... That... Moving on to the next story, I need to watch this. It's the Fury from the Deep uh, new release that came out last year. I need to watch this, I haven't watched it yet. This is uh, it's Detective wrapping. I need to get around to doing that. And then moving on to next, the Dominators. Now this one, I could say, is a fairly good story. A very underrated one. I like all the interesting bits about the Dominators and the Quarks and things. This may be my first ever Troughton story. I think it possibly might be, but it's an okay one to start with. Yeah, I think it's good. And then we come to the last episode that Pat Shrouton was appearing as the second Doctor and in his own series. The War Games, this is the ten-part epic that is great. And, um, yeah, it's a great story. Cost me £8 from CX. It's a very nice uh, DVD. I think this this one's very good. I like the thing. I want them to do a special edition of that. That would be much better. Uh, I don't have Spearhead from Space, so we start off with Inferno. Um, really good story. I really want to get the edition for this, but I don't think that will... Um, oh, I probably won't be able to afford that, but maybe I'll find it. Calls of Axos. I need to get around to watching this one. Calls of Axos. Well, from what I've heard, it's a good story. I need to really watch this. Maybe I will get around doing it, considering it's Easter. Uh, moving on to the Three Doctors. Now, it's a very interesting story. In fact, you've got William Hartnell reprising his role, Patrick Troughton reprising his role. It's a very good story. And I say that 
with very good uh, things. I think it's good story, just a fun little anniversary kind of thing. And it's good that they managed to get William Hartnell uh, back, even though he was just reading off a, uh, a queue line and everything on the side. Uh, this was a story, um, when I was in space, um, it's okay, and it also, no, wonder what that black blob is, it's obviously a dark, because then we go next to Planet of the Daleks. Uh, I need to watch some Pertwee, I haven't watched hardly any Pertwee, I need to do that, and then moving swiftly on to the Green Death. Uh, good story, good depart. A good departure for Joe Grant and everything. Now moving on to Sarah Jane of Sarah Jane's first story, The Time Warrior. Very good uh, thing. You see links there with the thing and then the space pod in the background. It's a good picture. Uh, good introduction to a companion. Uh, now moving on to Robot, the first episode of the fourth Doctor. Um, yeah, it's um. Good one, all oh, interesting. This is one of my earliest ones, actually. Right, probably one of my earliest Tom Baker ones. Um, it's a good story about all the um, kind of uh, the, well, the K one robot and all of that, and how Sarah Jane goes to explore the the institute wherever it, where it's from, and Harry goes undercover. It's quite a good story, uh, and a set of unit as well, which is always nice to have. Uh, it's a call back to the John Pertwee days. Um, the Sontaran Experiment. I need to properly finish this. Even though it is a two-part, I'm going to re-watch it. I haven't watched it in a long time. Um, yeah, I'm going to re-watch it. I think it's been years since I last watched the Sontaran Experiment. I really need to get around to watching that. Now, my first ever classic DVD I have here. Please get out. Get out. Genesis of the Daleks. Now, what a story. What a story. It is great. It is a great story. Um, Genesis of the Daleks is a very... I think the best episode in series 12. Um, if not... And then we come to... The finale of series 12. Revenge of the Cybermen. Uh, now, it has been a long time since I last saw this, but it's good about the reintroduce the arc. I haven't got the arc, but I think that's the only one I'm missing from series 12. Yeah, it does look like that. And then we come to Terror of the Zygons, Harry Sullivan's last story, and um, the last appearance of Sergeant Benton and all of the unit team. It seems crazy that this was the last one that has all of those guys in there. And then we move on to the Hand of Fear. Now, this one, the I think I got the second hand. It's been a bit battered. I don't know why I got got it second hand. So it's probably just um, a bit ruined a bit. But yeah, it doesn't matter. It's a good story and good departure. Uh, good departure for Sarah Jane. And yeah, I think it's a great story. And it shows how she's such a great companion and. She was well loved, and that's why they wanted her back for all the others. Uh, yeah, I'll put that back. Now moving on to the talons of Weng Chiang. Um, fairly interesting story. Um, it's a bit unusual with all of the like Mr. Sin and the rat, giant rat, and Jason and Lightfoot and all of this. So it's a very unusual plot, if I say that. Um... It's quite good, but the title's a bit unusual. <sighs> Moving on to the in the invisible enemy of uh, Canine's first story. Uh, yeah, interesting. Like he's not really a big theme of it. If you you thought he may be a big theme of it, but he really isn't. Like if you know what I mean, he kind of kind of just works. Out. Sorry, my camera's doing something a bit weird. Someone's hopping down. I think so I'm not being very steady. Um, it's a good, fairly good story. Um, also very interesting to find out about other characters and finding about K9. And also this was my earliest exposure to the character of Leela, uh, who I didn't know much about up to that point. 
Next, moving on to Destiny of the Daleks. I don't have any of the first Romana. I've only got Romana 2's kind of series. I don't know, I think I'll just wait for the Blu-ray of that, hopefully. Um, Destiny of the Daleks, a great, great, great story. Um, uh, obviously, it's quite good. And also, we have the new um, person who plays Davros in this, which is very interesting. Even though he looks very, very similar to the original Davros, it's because they use the same mask and everything. It's um, very good showing how the causes of uh, a Genesis causes of Genesis have basically since that time everything well say a couple of series have kind of led up to this which is good and how all of the cities introduced and everything it's quite quite good sorry I need I wish I could get some Daleks from that me then my next story is the horns of Nymon I Need to revisit this episode. It's been a long, 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 long time since I um watched this. A long time since I watched um the Horns of Nymon, but I think it's a fairly decent story. It's not something overly amazing, but it's also John Nathan Turner's first time as showrunner. But I think he did okay for that story. Moving on to the introduction. Of Adric. This is Adric's introduction. The full full circle. Um, yeah, full circle is a fairly average story. K9 gets his head knocked off. Get introduced the character of Adric. Um, yeah, I think it's a good one. Also, it's a nice story to watch, and I think I would watch it any day. I think it's a perfectly good one. And then. The, the, the decay thing. Um, this one about the vampires and everything, it's a fairly decent story. And also, Adric comes back again, and we've been stuck in that E Space. This is the E Space trilogy. It's quite a good story. Then, Warrior's Gate, which uh, sees the departure of Romana and K9. So, from the classic series, they're gone. Um, yeah, I fairly rate this quite good. It's not the best leaving story. Ah, and then moving on to the Keeper of Traken. Um, from what I remember, I, oh, it's been a really, really, really long time. I need to rewatch loads of these. Um, from what I remember, it's quite good and uh, everything. And Nissa gets introduced and the Master and all of the plots and everything. I think. It's an okay story. Then we come to Megopolis. Um, yeah, Megopolis. Good, fairly good story. Kind of leaning on from the last story. It's kind of what you would call an old day two parter. It was like uh, you would see that bit. A bit like with the Planet of the Daleks and that one over there. Um, yeah, it was kind of like that. But Megopolis is a fairly good one. Uh, I think. This came in the New Beginnings box set. I've got the New Beginning box set here. I don't know where the sleeve went for it. Moving on to the first episode of The Fifth Doctor, Cast Revolver, which is uh, very good. Introduces, like, companions like Tegan, even though she was introduced in um, Megopolis, but it doesn't matter. Uh, good introduction to The Fifth Doctor. How he discovers Celery at the party and everything. Um, yes, it's quite good, and all the, all the facts about the city being all, like, illusions and going around, it's quite good. Black Orchid. Ah, uh, now, this is the last pure historical before, um, this is the last ever historical story. Um, good one about, you know, Nyssa and she having, like, some kind of clone and all of that, and then the man in the mask and everything, and it was that. It's kind of, I get Phantom of the Opera, kind of vibes from it. They're kind of a bit like Phantom of the Opera kind of types. There's a man wearing the mask and everything, but he does get thrown off a roof at the end. Sorry, spoiler. Um, moving on to the Five Doctors. I haven't got very many Fifth Doctor stuff. Five Doctors is a good anniversary special. Um, yeah, it's got all five incarnations. Well, 
if we class Richard Handel as the first Doctor, um, he does a fairly decent portrayal of the first Doctor. I wouldn't rate him as the best representation, and this is the special edition version, so this isn't like the one you get if you were to go down your local um, HMV. It's kind of... You can buy this second hand, you can buy it from wherever, wherever. I got mine from CX, because that's where I get most of the DVDs. Um, Fairly good anniversary special. Uh, yeah. Moving on to uh, series 21. The Awakening. Um, the Awakening. Uh, I like this. But it was a bit weird it was paired with the gunfighters for Earth stories, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it's a uh, interesting story. I like the how the wall comes apart and you see the face and all of that trickery and what's going on, and there's like some medieval person trapped inside a wall, and it's like, and it's set in modern day, and Tegan's trying to visit her uncle and everything. It's very unusual, and like, my first exposure to the character of Turlo. So, yeah, moving on to the caves of Andrazani. I don't know whether we can see it now on camera, but it was the end of my shelf. Um, caves of Andrazani. Fairly good story, and uh, also the second episode that introduces the character of Perry. I don't know whether it works well on the camera, but I think it's fairly good. You and everything, I think it's fairly good. Uh, and moving on, we have the two Doctors. I don't really have much of the sixth Doctor. He's not the... He's not my favourite Doctor, if you know what I mean. He isn't doesn't shout at me to me like... Um, Patrick Troughton does the second Doctor, but it's good that we have the second Doctor here. I mainly got it for the Series 6B theory about how there being a hidden series and all of that. And it was nice to expand on that, because I'd only had that with the five Doctors, which I'd had for years. Um, yeah, I think fairly good. If this will go back in the, in the case, because it kind of used to get stuck a little bit. It's because of the... Take uh, Remembrance of the Dalek Special Edition. Now, this thing is a thing of beauty. It's a great story. All the different coloured Daleks. You may remember I did a review of that Dalek. The uh, the toy character, toy version, which I have up here. Okay, I did a review of that, if you remember. Yeah, I did a little review of that. Um, if you want me to talk about this uh, in any of videos, um, go ahead, ask me to do a review of any of the episodes you like or want me to do a video on. I could do all the William Hartnell stuff that I've watched, all the Patrick Trout stuff I've watched, or John Bertwee or Tom Baker, or any of that. Um, Pete Davidson, maybe. Uh, yeah, it's a good story. I would rate that 10 out of 10. And that was kind of the anniversary special. Uh, here we have um, Silver Nemesis. It's okay. It's 25th anniversaries go, I don't think it's that well remembered, so, um, yeah, I think that's okay, um, I think that's okay, so, yeah, moving on to uh, Battlefield, um, Battlefield, the last episode that has, um, the Brigadier in, the last episode that has the Brigadier in, so, it's, um, it's a good one, it's okay, and that's my last episode I have of the classic series. I don't have survival or the TV movie. So we go straight into the ninth Doctor, which we have here with Volume 1. So that is... Um, what is it again? Uh, so the first three episodes. So Rose, the end of the world. Um, yeah, so it's good. I rate that, it's good. Uh, moving on to Volume... Two. If it if it come out of the case because it can always get stuck. Uh, yeah, volume two has got uh, so the introduction of Adam Mitchell in Dalek, and um, yeah, um, also got yeah the introduction of Adam Mitchell and uh, Slivine in Downing Street and all of that interesting stuff. Moving on to the next one, volume three, the like empty child Doctor dances and. The long game, and obviously you can see all of the people on the back of that. So you see introduction of John Barrowman as a 
full time companion. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think it's very, very good. That's the case, so we're moving on now, swiftly on to Volume 4, Parting of the Ways, and all of that other stuff. So, I think it's fairly decent, fairly good, average, but good swung song for him, and great. I can't believe that that's all we got. And then we'll be moving on to the Christmas special of 2005, which I have here. Which is, here we have here, it is, uh, what's it called? The uh, Christmas Invasion, yeah, the Christmas Invasion, really, really great. Um, a good introduction to David Tennant as the Doctor. Uh, Billy Piper gets a really annoying in this series. I'm not so big of a fan. And if you do like any of the Ninth Doctor stuff, I can do a review of all of the episodes and rank them if you want me to. And then moving on to the Series 2 box set, if I get this out, it's kind of held in place. Series 2 box set, fairly average. Have a look on this side where we've got some bad pictures of David Tennant and Billy Piper, Tenth Doctor and Rose. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of Series 2, apart from that it reintroduces K9 and Sarah Jane, but, yeah, that's, it's an okay series, I, I like Love and Monsters, that might be very, very controversial, but that's what I have, uh, then we'll just move on quickly to uh, the other stuff, that I, yeah, the later stuff, if we do a review of that now, I'm just going to go and get the stuff. Here, so we'll we'll start with series three. We move on to series three. We start off with here the Runaway Bride. Um, good story. Um, introduced Catherine Tate in the role of Donna Noble. It's good, and it sets up for the future. Uh, then moving on to I might as well just show series three in a full package. Uh, uh, we have volume one, volume two. I can go through these separately if you really want me to. So, Volume 1, good introduces Martha Jones. Volume 2, obviously you got, like, Evolution of the Daleks. Daleks in Manhattan, the Lazarus Experiment, and all of that. Very interesting. And all of that, that's very interesting. And then, obviously, this is probably my favourite episodes of Series 3, so we got, like... Uh, Family of Blood, uh, Human Nature, and um, Blink. Yeah, good stories. Mm, they're really well regarded by me, and a fan, uh, as a fan of the show. Uh, the series three. So yeah, we have th these stories are great. It's kind of what you would call. Uh, sorry about the back. That don't even know how that happened. I might need to get a new cover case for that, but it doesn't matter. So we have like Utopia, like the Sound of Drums, Last of Time Mods. It's fairly decent and good. Good story. Moving on swiftly on to series four, possibly one of the best series of New Who. Um if I just say so, it is great and great and great. It's so well written, series four. And all the characters get that, and also the Christmas special of that year. Uh, it was really great. Um, not that I remember it, obviously, because I was very young at the time. Um, moving on to the last series of David Tennant, the specials. I I call this the Series 5, but uh, other people just call it the specials. I always call it Series 5. I always call it Series 5 Part 1, because that's what I kind of class it as. But you can call it whatever you want to call it, the specials or whatever. The specials are quite good, um, fairly good. Moving on, here we have the 11th hour and all of those other stories. Um, yeah, fairly Fairly good. I like it lots. It's got all of that on it, like Winston Churchill, 
and all of the other stuff. It's great. I'm good into introductions to all of that. Good introduction to all of that. And then moving on to... Sorry about my camera keeps on falling. It's kind of unsteady. So, yeah, I kind of... I regard... This is um, good. Volume 2, Sleeping Angels and all of that. It's good... I would just recommend the whole of Series 5, if I was here. It's, series 5 is a great, um, oh yeah, uh, you may have seen on the back of that little Sid from Father Brown who played uh, in the character. So Series 5 is a great series. If you want me to move some of these out of the way, I'm just going to now. So then we have the, we have the Christmas special of that year. So have the finale. Which is quite good. Also, the lodger and all of that introduced to Craig Owens. And um, yeah, I will just now take you a look at all the other kind of stuff in my collection. So, series series six. So, here we have series six. But um, good story. Good um, series six. This is part one. I never got part two, but I have seen all the stories in part one and part two. But so. Next uh, one, uh, Series 7. Series 7, I dislike Series 7. I'm not the biggest fan of Series 7, but it's okay in some aspects. Um, I'll just move on to the the specials of that year, which was Time of the Doctor and Day of the Doctor, another multi-doctor story. I've seen all of multi-doctor stories. And I'll just have a look at the parts here. You may have seen that. This is the Peter Cushing Doctor Who movie. Um, Doctor and Dalek one. It's a good one. I think it's amazing. Very, very good. Uh, great Peter Cushing's good in it. I need to get around to rewatching this. Okay. Now, moving on to a, another one. Here we have K9 and Company. This is a good spin-off, a fairly good spin-off. They didn't make any more. But I feel like they should have done. It would be a lot better if they did make any more. And we have Torchwood. We have Torchwood. Uh, it's okay from what I saw of it. I was a bit young to remember. Um, so if on the best spin-off of all time, the Sarah Jane Adventures. This is great. I can do a single review of this box set if you want me to. Got it for... Christmas, uh, I think it was 2017, so the year of the 10th anniversary, I got it, and yeah, it's a um, good thing to have if you like the series and watch it. Um, yeah, now moving on to the last one, it isn't really Doctor Who, but yeah, the Inventor in Space and Time, everyone's got to own this, I mean, History of Doctor Who, if you don't own this, then, I mean, you need to just go to a HMV when they reopen. Um, and yeah, thank you all for joining me in this trip down memory lane of all my DVDs and see what I've we, uh, watched. And um, yeah, if you like any more videos from me, Evan, I'll see you soon, very soon. Like, subscribe, and goodbye.